Thanks for staying with us. It's now time to go to the press and see what we can lift off the press uh, by looking at the headlines that made it to the front pages of some of our national dailies this morning. Uh, we have uh, Mr. Tunde Kolawole, a legal practitioner here in Lagos State, joining us to discuss the papers. Good morning and welcome to the program, Mr. Kolawole. Good morning, my brother. Thanks for having me. Mm. It's always a pleasure. Okay, so let's begin with the Business NG. Uh, Business NG, I'm going to uh, talk something a little, a little bit not business. Police warn protesters waving foreign flags, calling for military takeover, and uh, federal government places and bad governance protest sponsors on watch list. Uh, Lagosians opt for dialogue as Lagos state government opens new channel for communication. All that is... Uh, tied to end bad governance. And I'd like to just throw into that uh, fray as well, the fact that the police has come out to say that they did not use live bullets. So they have no idea where the bullets that killed the people came from. What? Uh, it's unfortunate that um, life has been lost with regard to this uh, last process. That ought not to be all over the world, it is considered to be an abomination and an apparition that people in authority would turn or trail the guns, but with taxpayers' money, but with the people's money, on the same people who contributed or who, who paid taxes for those uh, weapons to be bought. The weapons in the hand of the state is supposed to be trailed against external aggressors, and maybe in few circumstances against those who threaten the life of uh, life of uh, life um, enforcement agents. In the circumstances of the last uh, protest, we didn't see any situation in which, especially the southern part of the country, in which the protesters threaten the life of any security agent or any public official. So no life ought to have been lost. While the demonstration in Nigeria was going on, a similar demonstration against um, immigrants was going on in Britain. And to the best of my knowledge, from the documentaries and television I watched, not a single protester was killed in Britain. Rather, the police were watching, rather they were monitoring, and later in the day and at night, they used CCTV camera another reporting device that they have in them, to trace and trace all those who, who participated in the demonstration and who participated in the destruction of property to their respective home and IT places and went there to arrest them. And those people are now being prepared to uh, make it to court for prosecution. That is the way it is. But here are times without number, like we saw during the MSAR, people in authority who play God who ordered the police, the security agents, to start shooting at other people's children when their own children are in the UK, they are in Canada, they are in the uh, USA, and different parts of the world, in Ivy League University. The killing of children in Nigeria has to stop a fortress. And then the other angle you mentioned, which is a certain person that was sponsoring the process, that is a poor argument. A mumble opinion and escapist argument and uh, an argument that ought not to be coming from the authorities. Does anybody need to be sponsored to know that he is hungry? Does anybody need to be sponsored to know that the admin of the Nigerian nation, the management of the resource of the Nigerian nation, is not being done in a very prudent and a very frugal manner? Does anybody need to be sponsored? To know that our leaders have engaged in profligacy, they have engaged in observation of life at the essence of the ordinary Nigerian people. Does anybody need to be sponsored to know that um, most of the challenges we have in the country today are man made, are problems created by our own leaders? So, honestly speaking, the witch hunting of political opponents and branding them as people who are sponsoring the protests and all that to be totally rejected uh, by all Nigerian people. Rather, we should be looking at the situation in which all those who have brought us to our knees, 
who have ruined the nation, who are inflicting hunger on the ordinary Nigerian people, and who will not allow the finalists in Nigeria to work because of uh, the unmerited profits and gains that they make from the dysfunctionality of those refineries, they are the ones that should, be, that should be brought to book to a kind of what I would describe as a kind of um, a justice and truth initiative in which all those who have brought the nation to this peril should be called to account. Yeah, so uh, the, the effort of the Lagos State Government to open that channel that people will be reaching them, do you think it's just a, an exercise in futility or you think it's going to yield uh, good results? Well, honestly speaking, it ought to be a welcome development if they were sincere about it. I think so too. Uh, because at the end of the day, when you look at um, what happens around the world, no matter how big a problem is, People issues or fundamental issues like war, at the end of the day, you still have to go to the negotiation table and resolve your differences, uh, solve the problem one way or another. So to that extent, um, the initiative of the local Lagos State government is a welcome development. Mm. But the question you would ask yourself is this, are they sincere about this uh, initiative that they have initiated? What has happened to the initiative this, 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 this? They did in the past. Remember during the NSAS protest, they similarly set up a committee or a panel, which I think was headed by Eguade Borua or thereabouts. I can remember. What came out of that, uh, of that, uh, of the formations of that uh, panel? You also would ask yourself, if these people are really interested in dialogue, why is it that again we saw who long, we saw thoughts, and we smarted? with cops and other dangerous weapons going to the protest gang to attack protesters and what have you. Why is it that certain person who has been threatening that the evil should leave Lagos? Why is it that those who said they want to do all because certain persons want to uh, engage in protest? Why haven't the same government gone after them? Why haven't they asked the security agency to go and fish up those people who are never made behind them and then bring them to justice? An Ibo leader, uh, some time ago, was accused of saying that he was going to bring uh, IPOP to Lagos. And swiftly, the Lagos authorities went after him and arrested him. And I think he's still in prison or maybe he's been granted pay. But somehow he's been prosecuted. So why can't we do the same thing? Fish are those who are saying both will go. Fish are those who are saying that uh, they want to do all because certain persons want to protest and also bring them to justice. Uh, According them. You see, so when you see this double speak, when you see this um, a different approaches to similar issues and all that, it sometimes begins to give you worries that the people who are initiating these things may not be sincere with the Nigerian people and with the Lagos people, especially when you take the antecedents into consideration. So, but let's give them benefits of doubt. Whoever has um, information, Whoever feels like approaching whatever panel they want to see, can approach it. Provided that panel or that initiative will not be used again to start identifying people and then uh, going after them, after the thoughts of these issues, after the thoughts of these protests, they have settled. Because our people will be afraid, uh, especially what happened, uh, taking cognizance of what happened during the end time, that it may be a a kind of um, a subtlety to start identifying and then uh, going after those who participated in this uh, protest. In the end, South protest, people's accounts were free. So people have been chased out of the country. They cannot return. Others were attacked and uh, there were killings. The mortuary was uh, full. And the uh, now, uh, I'm not too sure, but anything concrete has been done with regard to the, to the disposal of those uh, corpses that are in the mortuary mm. and all that. Okay. Um away from that, uh, anyway, uh, it's connected because uh, it's to uh, remove hunger from our land. Uh, there's, this still had this, there's still this headline on Business NG, uh, before we leave Business NG. Federal government asks workers to register to buy 40,000 Naira rice. 
So this rice that we heard that designated uh, areas uh, were there that you can go and get rice for 40,000 naira, wor naira. Workers now have been asked to register before they can buy this rice. The operative word here is workers, which means workers in the government employ. So if you're not working for the government, there may not be a possibility uh, as far as this headline is concerned. So what do you feel about that? We're kicking out hunger by asking the, 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 um, the workers to register first so that they can get this rice. Mm. Well, uh, that's a very good point uh, that you have made. When you look at the percentage of those who work for the federal government, of those who work for the state government, of those who work for the local government. What is the percentage of those people? These are these the ordinary Nigerian person who are in the informal sector, the market women, the media men, the journalists, the lawyers, and what have you. There is the testimony. But again, don't let us um, wave aside the initiative of the federal government. If they can take it in places, like they say they are now addressing those who are in the former sector, those who are working uh, for the government, uh, what are they? If they tackle the hunger at the local government level you, uh, with the workers at the state level and at the federal level and all that, and they can then go a little further, they are after using market women, using community leaders, using cooperative uh, associations, using their societies, using clubs and all that, to also address the hunger, where uh, it may, one way or the other, has the problem on the surface. But the truth of the matter is this. We're a country of about 200 million people. And if you are going to be addressing the hunger of about 200 million people, we will require to have an holistic approach, um, holistic approach to it. I would, in my own opinion, we find a situation in which the government will engage in very massive, massive food importations and then give it to the uh, channels where distributions of this kind of food usually uh, take place before. That is true, those who import some of these commodities and the past are not. And ask them to sell at certain prescribed rates. Uh, that would be very convenient for whether the workers or whether the people in the informal sector, the organizers, the trade women, and what have you. Because we are saying this, you will recollect that only the Shagari era, not only the military era, we used to have the, what you call essential commodities yeah. distribution outlets uh, in those days. You go and queue at the offices of the Nigerian National Supply uh, Agency or kind of uh, I can't remember the, 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 the actual names now. And that process became um, a forum for enrichment, for abuses, and we those who were charging the responsibility of managing those assets and making life comfortable for the people and getting essential commodities uh, and making it available for the people. Started using the forum to enrich themselves and started holding those things and diverting them. And what have you. But as it were today, Whatever efforts that the federal government, the state government, the local government are making, should not be condemned outrightly. We should just watch them and insist and encourage them to do it in such a manner that the intended recipients, beneficiaries of these um, food items, eventually get it at the end of the day, and uh, that the people charge the responsibility of the distribution who now again begin to use it to enrich themselves and also to divert the, the food item. Okay, uh, well, uh, I'm sure why this problem is coming is because we don't have data in this country. And um, exactly. uh, at, at, to some extent, you'll know that somebody who registers to get a, a particular thing cannot come back twice if you are exactly. entitled to only a particular number of bags and all that. So, well, let's watch and see. Exactly. Un unfortunately, the import duty waiver that was uh, announced, well, fortunately, that was announced a, a few days ago um, on essential commodity like uh, rice and other, other commodities begins next week. So which means it has not begun, it will begin next week. And we hope that the, the process will be seamless. Uh, but let's see. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, let's... I have my reservations with uh, 
I have my reservations with those uh, waiver mm. of duties, ladies, and all that on these food items. Is it so uh, long as the, the naira mm. is not stable? So long as the naira continues to fall, these are these the dollars. Whoever import those goods and services into the country today will sell at the rate at which the naira is paid for the dollar. So the people at the end of the day might not be benefiting from that way back because the naira is not stable. These are these the dollars. And then there's also the essential issue of profiteering. Most times our importers and no one of our businessmen are not the patriotic type. Who would sell without selling and then pick, I mean and then uh, make marginal profit? Most times they want to make a windfall of whatever opportunities that are given to them. It becomes an opportunity for them to become multi billionaire. Say for example the petroleum product. Sometimes a petrol station will be having a whole stock in its um, in the bank. And then when they get information that the government wants to increase the price of petroleum products and all that, they will not, they will not sell. Immediately the prices are increased and all that, they begin to sell. And they make a windfall. So it is not impossible. And there is no mechanism for the federal government to be able to enforce the prices that these people will sell to the ordinary person in Nigeria. That is why it's very, very difficult for these waivers and levies uh, to, to make impact, to have a positive um, effect on the prices at which some of these uh, essential food items will be sold in the market. But like you said, lack of strategy is a problem. In some countries of the world, you know, what people who are living below the marginal line, who are living in poverty, merely do is that they register in certain places and what are those. And then they give them food stamps. And some of these food that uh, will be given to them are dispatched directly to whatever addresses that the people give without any interface. An agency will just dispatch those food items to these people wherever they may have given as, uh, as their recipient uh, addresses. But because we don't have such data in Nigeria, that is very, very difficult um, uh, to do. Yeah, but um, do you believe these headlines on Nature News? That one we're talking about was on Punch. On Nature News, they say farmers applaud Tinubu's tax waivers on essential food items. Uh, do you believe it? Because um, I would think that the farmers will also be thinking about the correspondent um, waivers on essential farm inputs that they should have used uh, to make their farms and also make some money. Because once these things begin to come into the country, it means that the farmers will be on the losing end. Uh, they cannot produce much, and the much that they are, they, the much that they are producing will not even sell as high as they, they would want it because you have farm inputs being so high and then you are still using this one to plant some food items that may not even sell so high in the market. So while we are rejoicing on the one hand, the farmers may also not be rejoicing because uh, there's, no, uh, there's no balance, uh, so to speak. But this headline is saying that the farmers applaud um, uh, the tax waivers on essential food items. Do you believe it? Well, uh, that is uh, difficult to believe. Uh, in the sense that uh, you and I will know that the reasons why most businesses collapse in Nigeria and why certain businesses are leaving Nigeria is because of the high cost of production. We collect that at a time, then Gotten went and invested in the tomato paste uh, uh, making in this country. That business collapsed because they could not uh, compete with the imported tomato uh, paste. Also recollect that Nestle food impact on um, investment in uh, tomato, uh, puri, I mean uh, wheat, and some of the other raw materials that they used to produce their goods and uh, what have you. At the end of the day, that family exercise also collapsed. So it's difficult for the local farmers to be able to compete with their food items that have been imported uh, from abroad because the cost of production and the scale of production of the food items uh, coming from abroad is not the same uh, with Nigeria. Here it is labor intensive, here it is very, very expensive to produce, here you are contending with electricity, here you are contending with the transportation and what 
So they are at a disadvantage. So when we hear that farmers are jubilating because the waivers have been granted on uh, certain um, food items to be imported to the country, we should be wary of such, um, of such news. I do hope it is not propaganda. A good farmer would rather want to see a situation in which the government will invest in his farm in terms of uh, providing him uh, high yield shipping, mm -hmm. uh, in terms of investing in uh, uh, tractors and other working fields, in terms of giving him fertilizer to be able to fertilize his uh, farm and not uh, encourage him to that to the state government and the local government to start importing uh, food items into the country. Mm -hmm. So, uh, if we don't have the uh, full details of why the farmers are supporting this, mm -hmm. we should um, just take it as um, uh, something that the public is looking at. The interim or the, 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 the short-term gap that such importations are likely to feed. In the long run, it will not be in the interest of this country to continue to engage in massive food in production because that is likely to kill all the farming that are taking place in Nigeria. Mm. Okay. Um, in the wake of uh, the, the protest, that, that is before the protest, rather, um, the House of Reps came out and said that they were cutting their salary by 50%, uh, maybe just to make sure that uh, people don't protest and all that. But right now, there's this headline, which is saying, reps fail to effect 50% pay cut. And this was only on salary. Nobody talked about allowances, like uh, uh, yeah. newspaper allowance, uh, hardship allowance, wardrobe allowance, and the rest of that. Nobody talked about it. But the paltry sum that was supposed to be the basic salary of them, that they said they were going to cut, and they still have not cut it. In fact, they have failed to cut it, meaning that they may never cut it. Uh, I don't know how you feel about that. Well, uh, let's uh, congratulate the people in the House of Red for taking that uh, step and uh, what have you. But we should also remind them that that is tokenism. It doesn't really address the challenges or the issues. But they didn't even cut it. They didn't hands. even affect it. Just like you said, mm -hmm. just like you said, uh, if you call the salary, what is salary? Basic salaries. What about the allowances? The transport allowance, the newspaper allowance, personal assistant allowance, the Hardship allowance. allowance, the consistency allowances, and what have you. Are they also going to cut that? The answer is no. I would rather want to see a situation like I have always advocated, in which the people in the National Assembly, whether at the local government level or at the state level or at the federal level, when the salaries that civil servants are earning, or at worst, they should be paid sitting allowances for whatever job they are doing. This country is no longer rich enough to begin to pay the kind of salaries and allowances that is paid to its legislators. Let's make it a part-time thing. Anytime they go to the National Assembly in Abuja, anytime they go to the House of Assembly at the state level, anytime they go to the local government level, as uh, legislators and all that, let them be paid sitting allowance. And if that is not possible, if they wouldn't accept that, let us be paying them the salaries of civil servants. Uh, the senators can earn maybe a little more than the permanent secretary at the federal level, which at the state level, and also at the local government level. And uh, the fact will even, it could also even be that we also have, um, let them also queue into uh, the minimum wage issue, whatever wages is designed for the civil servants, let the honorable or the legislators at the state level, at the local government level, at the federal level, also queue into it. They are not a special breed of human beings. And they don't have two or three stomachs in one person. And like human beings, if they desire to live a good life, the ordinary more the is also required to live a good life. The 70,000 naira they have prepared is the minimum wage. It's not enough to feed their dogs. It's not enough to feed their horses. It's not enough to feed their cats and some of these domestic uh, animals. 
that they keep in their home. So why would they be recommending it for women based on what are they? So anyway, we congratulate them for that token concession that they are making. But it is not far reaching enough. It will not solve the problem at hand. The legislator should either give in to getting only allowances on a part time basis when they go to the assembly to make laws, or we begin to pay them the salaries of civil servants, the average civil servants. They can give in to give in to from step one to a team that is paid to civil servants uh, all over the country today, using the minimum wage as a benchmark. That is one of the ways that we can free from resources for the development of this uh, society. To fix education, to fix uh, health, to fix the deplorable infrastructure. For God's sake, this country is 200 million people. All this tokenism will not address the challenges, the monumental challenges that we have in our hands. Mm. Uh, well, you're talking about what should happen, but, but now we are even looking at the fact that what they promise to do, uh, they are not even doing it. 50% of that small salary, they're not cutting it at all. Well, you're telling us what they're supposed to do. Um, so yeah. if, is, is it the minimum wage that they will come and collect, 70,000? Uh, Mr. Akola, will, Nigerians will tell you they play. Yes, Na, Nigeria will just tell, tell you they play. They know Greek court salary, <laughs> now, now minimum wage they won't collect. <laughs> look, look let, let, I have also said this. The people are supreme. Hmm? The people we have as leaders, whether in the executive arm of government, whether in the legislators, whether in the judiciary and all that, are servants of the people. They are not the ones that should be presented to the people how much they will earn, where they will live, the kind of uh, vehicles that they will use. This is the Nigerian people that will tell them, that will dictate to them. This is the way and manner. But, but who are the Nigerian people? Because the revenue mobilization and fiscal policy or so office uh, that, that sets the salaries for, for people, uh, we're saying the other time that uh, they are reviewing their salary, the last time they reviewed their allowances and all that, that um, they, the one they were earning was not befitting of a senator, a national assembly member in Nigeria, befitting. There are some countries whose presidents do not earn as much as the House of Reps member in Nigeria or House of, um, House of the Senate uh, senator in Nigeria, and we're talking about befitting a Nigerian senator, a Nigerian House of Reps member, uh, befitting in what <coughs> regards? Is Nigeria a, a giant of the world, or even in Africa, it's as if instead of being a lion, it has now become a cat. So what, what do they mean by befitting? So when you talk about the people that they should be the ones that will dictate what they earn, who are the people? Because this, this revenue mobilization, allocation a committee, uh, they're speaking seemingly not for the people, but for the same government that we are, we are complaining about. Yes, that's a truth. That should not surprise you. The revenue and fiscal mobilization uh, committee and all that, it's uh, part and parcel of the executive arm of government. Now, what are they? And being executive arm of government, that part of the ruling class, you will not expect them to do anything that is going to be injurious to their class. When they are trying to make this um, or prescribe whatever salaries and allowances, the legislators, the executive, the judiciary will get and all that. They are mindful that uh, they will also be affected one way or the other if they prescribe uh, very low wages and allowances for these people because it will affect them. So to that extent, uh, uh, they are not likely to do anything drastic that would affect the salaries and allowances of the people we have mentioned. You see, when the question was being made, these are some of the things we should have worked into it that should have been part and parcel and order. Rather than just merely leaving the decision as regards what certain persons will end and what other persons will not end to a committee or a panel in the general arm of government, it could be cited in the constitution that uh, in Nigeria, uh, being a member of the legislature is going to be on a part time basis, or that they are going to earn the salaries and allowances of civil servants. If those things have been embedded in the constitution and what have you, there will be no need or it is impossible for any revenue and fiscal commission to start prescribing the kind of jumbo salary and allowances 
that did not prescribe for the same time of government, the judiciary, and the legislator. They will have no option other than to abide by what is contained in the Constitution. But you and I do know that people who make laws who ordinarily make it for their own benefit and not for the benefit of the ordinary person on the street. Okay. That is why we've been saying things okay. like agitation, things like protest, things like writing petitions to the people in the executive of government, the assemblies, and the local government level and all that, are part and parcel of the democratic process, are part and parcel of letting the people who are ruling us, who are in charge of our affairs, know where the issue is thinking of, and uh, getting them to do the right thing. Uh, what have you? Uh, Mr. Kolawole, Mr. Kolawole, uh, Mr. Kolawole, just a moment. Our, our time has has run out, but I'd just like your thoughts, maybe thirty seconds, if you may, uh, on this. Okay. I don't, I don't know, I don't know whether to be happy about this or to be sad about this. The headline on the Guardian newspaper says, "After apology, APC to reinstate Ndume as chief whip." He has apologized and he's going to be reinstated as chief, chief whip. He was complaining his standing as a senior ranking member of the National Assembly uh, should make him occupy a better office. He shouldn't take the one that was given to him, blah, blah, blah. Now he has apologized and is going to be reinstated. Like I said, I don't know whether to be happy about this or to be sad because what he said, if he's apologizing for what he said, what does that mean? Does that mean that what he said was not true, was not strong enough, was not good enough? And I don't know. What is your take, as, as quickly as possible? When, uh, when a man has made a mistake, ordinarily there is no reason why, if he has made a mistake, he should not apologize for his mistake. But the question we have ourselves is that uh, what Indumen said, is it actually false? Was it a lie? Is it not a mirror of what is happening in the society? To the best of my knowledge, if what I read in the newspaper is correct and not right, I don't think there's any reason whatsoever for a to have, apolo to have apologized and not right. um, uh, And if he was also a man of integrity, he would not have gone out to start apologizing because he wants to get back to into the legislature. I want to get back his seat. What he should have done is to go to the court and challenge his expulsion and also his removal as, um, as he has achieved with of the Senate and what have you. And not to go cap in hand and start begging his colleagues for him to be pardoned and then, uh, and then uh, reinstated. reinstated and what have you. It's in right. fairness, if the people who are affected by what in Dumas said, uh, who reflect on it. Induna was merely doing them a uh, uh, good service and what have Some of the things that Induna has been saying, is you know what we have now seen in the protests that are just uh, taking place all over the country and what have you. Right. So people should not take uh, political opponents, people should not take criticism as um, uh, destructive all the time. Sometimes out of this criticism, People should be able to learn and make amends. And people should be tolerant. It okay. makes where people cannot criticize, where people cannot vote out their mind, where okay. there's no freedom of speech and all that. Democracy cannot thrive in such uh, an environment. True, true. Uh, well, uh, thank you, Mr. Kolawole, for uh, giving us your thoughts this morning on the headlines on our national dailies. It's always a pleasure having you join us. Thanks for having me. Mm. Have a wonderful Wish day. Wish you a lovely day. You too. You too. We've been talking to Mr. Tunde Kolaole, a legal practitioner here in Lagos. We were reviewing the papers. Right now, we'll take a short break. And when we return, we'll be looking at our first hot topic, which is NBAT governance. Federal government places protest sponsors on watch list. Stay with us. <laughs>